Okay. Now. We got this. Talk about. Red Knight. I hope that Quantum Leap video wasn't too quick. Oh, but I got my point across. I'm doing these simultaneously. Boom, 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 boom. I just didn't want to mix up the videos. But I'm with, I'm with the books. I'm very excited to have this. Red Knight number seven. I've been following the series since they showed up in black and white. You can see most of my reviews here on the channel. Let's start with the cover. Well, this kind of happens, but it kind of doesn't. Because you can see the main character, Todd McClain's love for Captain Danger, and you do get to see like flashbacks of that where he's playing with his brawling buddy. Which, if if you don't know what the, those are, they were something that that kids had in the nineties. I I had a brawling buddy where you'd like beat on the doll and it'd be like. A, professional wrestler and you could do all these wrestling moves to it and say, ah, whoa, whoo. It was, it was really cool. And it was just cool to see that they had that, but with Captain Danger's face instead of Sting or Hollywood Hulk Hogan or like Goldberg. I think those were the three. <laughs> that was cool. And that wasn't the only reference to real life events you got here. They made reference to the Tupac murder, which recently got solved. There was kind of a whole theme here going on that silence isn't cool. But that that could be just me digging into it. Um he meets Captain Danger. Captain Danger kind of turns out to be a old and jaded. Um, they had a really good cliffhanger. It was no issue five. Manos, if you're watching this, issue five is still your number one best issue so far. Issue 5 in black and white, it had the cliffhanger with with Dr. Sci-Fi, one of the main bad guys in this series. And he was getting, he was being interrogated. And you see a monster from another dimension. And my interpretation was that the monster is real. It was pointed out to me that that could be in his head, but um, the point was that that was there, and we could discuss it, and I just found that cool. And because it was originally in black and white, issue 5 had, like, that suspense about it. And, it, I mean, once you did it in color... It wasn't as cool, but it was still cool. And it wasn't as bad as issue six. Issue six was just stupid. Issue six was about a guy who could summon crows with magic or some. It was so throwaway that it was like. It was like. It was just filler before we got to this. Which is a three-part thing. I will be picking up. I will be picking up. Issue. I will be picking up. 
issues eight, eight and nine because I am curious to see how it goes. Um, yeah, you kind of got how Captain Universe created the, the head villain, if only by accident. It was just very good. But at the same time, that cliffhanger, that cliffhanger got me wasn't emotional but it made me want to pick up the next book which which is even more awesome I'll give it a four because I've seen you do better work but it's still no issue six issue six was horrible issue five was your best work yet But, yeah, um, I like how there is a second story that ties in, and, yeah, I, I really don't want to give too much away. It kind of made me wonder if there are other survivors of Red Knight's incident, because this, this issue had a lot of backstory involving how the superhero became illegal in this world. And my question got answered which leads me to that the my story could happen in this world. My story, like the story I'm working on, the fictional story I'm working on right now about superheroes, don't want to give too much away, but my story could exist. He said anything's possible, so yeah. I thought that was cool. I remember in the review for issue six, which I, I never posted the second half to, I have to get around to doing that eventually. If if only I'm gonna refilm it. But um spent the whole first half trying to plug my own story. I didn't want to talk about how stupid issue six was. I was like, but yeah, that's been part of the fun for me and right now that, that my story could take place here. Not in big DC, not in, not in, well, maybe in this. But not in like not in like this the night terrors I don't want it to, you know. But Red Knight absolutely it absolutely could take place. And I'm happy to hear that, that he hasn't completely discounted there being a multiverse. I liked when they were connected in the Powerverse. So, yeah. And that's part of the reason why they're getting a four. Pick it up as soon as it's available near you. Yeah. Please make this available to like a larger audience. That would be what I'd say. Anyway, let's talk about some of those other books I showed. Okay, Milestone. Static Shack. 
I don't remember if I talked about this one. I think I did, but needless to say, I liked it. I liked the bringing the Ebon. Ebon was and is a cool villain. The art brings in the, that it isn't from the 90s milestone, which I feel like they're trying to wash their hands up. But overall, it's not the worst book of the week. If I didn't do a score for it last time, I'll give it a three now, which, yeah, I don't know. I still want to read issue two. I, I wanted to read them all as one massive thing, but there's six of them. I couldn't ask mom to do that. So, yeah. Cool cover. It's memorable. I curious to see where they're going with the rest of the Milestone universe. Yeah. That's all I gotta say on that. All right. This, Shazam, Night Terrors, is you one. The art was cool. I mean, look at it. I feel like I'm saying that a lot. Yeah. But the art was cool. But at the same time, if you miss this event, you can just, it's not going to matter. It's not like, not like it's going to matter or anything. In the long, in the long grand scheme of things, I mean, they didn't kill Mary. Mary's fine. Everybody's a okay. You spend a lot of time in a dream. It didn't make it, didn't make it absolutely necessary for me to pick up issue two of this, but at the same time, I kind of want to, which I think is really DC. Really, you're going to give it just a good enough story where it's like, ah, good enough, you know enough. The more, the more you know, right? We're not going to, yeah. I am curious about it, but at the same time, it's not going to be like Superboy Prime fighting Billy Batson. In the last run where it's memorable. Um yeah. Okay. That one's done. Let's see. What else we got here? Okay. Now on to Superboy. 
man of tomorrow. I didn't have a whole lot to say about Night Terrors, but I did. I do have a reasonable amount to say about this because Superboy, I mean, come on, it's kind of, it's kind of, he will, to some extent, matter, and, and if you haven't heard what they're, what they're going, what they were thinking about, there you go, what they were, not what they were going to do, not what they, what they were thinking about doing with Connor Kent in real life. Like, what they were thinking about doing with the character. Which, I'd like to get into that for a few minutes if I may. It's my show. Why am I asking you? I know that I'm going to get into it regardless. Um... They were going to make him Connie Kent. A girl. They were going to say Connor was trans the whole time. But at the same time, they had the good sense enough to say, no, this isn't what this isn't A girl, this is Connor Kent, an identifiable character. But at the same time, I hate to see them throw away a character because if you've seen the artwork of Connie Kent, he, she could be one of his fans. And he does have fans in this book. That that person I tried to show you just a few minutes ago is one of his fans. The Beast Boy looking guy. He he's somebody who just wanted Connor to help him. Why why turn Connie into Connor? Why not just make her her own separate character? You no. Know? I mean I know you're struggling right now to figure out what to do with him. And I've been saying that for quite some time. That you can feel in this book they're struggling. They don't know what to do with Connor. Now that he's back. And now that we're allowed to use Superboy. All that stuff. But why not just make it that this fan really liked Connor and she has superpowers, too. Maybe she's a Daxamite. Who knows? Um, you're doing the clone thing again. Yeah. And they're, they're finally vanquishing that one Daxamite guy who I thought it was going to take him to at least issue seven. But I'm glad it stops at issue five. But I'm still disappointed being that this is what we voted for. This is what you guys voted for. This right here. Um, yeah. So it's going to get a four. Same score as Red Knight. Or three less than Red Knight, somewhere around there. It's not too material, but it's not, oh my god, this is the best story ever. Connor's been in better stories. He fought King Shark, he fought his future self. And I'm glad this, the Find a picture of him. I, 
I'm glad that this guy is dead and that he's not coming back again. Glad they acknowledged that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so none of them would be pick of the week material. Very happy to get Red Knight. Again, thanks, Manos. But, um, do I know how he's going to lead up to Red Knight Universe? No way. Not a clue. DC learn from the independent books. Before you make another issue of Superboy, actually learn from like Jupiter Jet and Red Knight and even your own stuff. Even even the static book that I I wasn't too ecstatic about. I mean, it was good, but yeah, I wasn't sure if I'd reviewed it already. But you need to learn before before we take another step. Go forward any further add another character to the universe actually put Connor in a good place that's all I gotta say um sorry if it seems that I was kind of hard on everything but I really do enjoy comics I enjoy the medium Hope to have my own superhero someday. <sighs> they did do good, even though none of them were pick of the week material. This is my world. Welcome to it. The cover had apps, although cool, had absolutely nothing to do with it. At least Manos' cover had at least Manos' cover had something to do with sorry. Like, comment, subscribe. At least Manos' cover had something to do with with the story. Yeah. It's not that hard, DC. Hey, everyone. Last part of the review here. Um... I forgot about this book. Kind of just me out a little bit, but hey, shit happened. Um, Spider Boy. Jeez, let's be honest. Who that's who I was picking up for? They didn't do anything in this book that implied that he's not remembering himself the improper timeline. You know, like a timeline that isn't the um isn't 616. I'm still free to believe that. It, it could be the Amalgam timeline. I hope it is.
but um, it was an overall good book. Not as good as Red Knight. Not as not as throwaway as Night Terrors. Uh, not as throwaway as Night Terrors, but overall, a good book. Um I will be picking up Bailey's new series, at least for first part. Maybe that there they'll implicate Doctor Strange and the bubble. They should definitely have the bubble. I mean, yeah. I I don't know what they're missing because you know somewhere they have the amalgam universe sitting on a shelf somewhere in Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum that would get me to shut up to confirm that this is not that spider boy yeah I saw the bubble it's not the universe I came from, that sort of thing. But overall, I still think Bailey. Bailey isn't as well written as Static, but give him time. Give him time. Because Static's had 30 some odd years, Bailey has had less than that. I mean, he had two books. In the 90s, and that is it. That is, even if I'm right, and this is the same Spider Boy, he had two books in the 90s, and never again. Yeah. Um. What can I say? Can't say a whole lot about the art. Don't want to complain about that. Their cover was cool. Although, although just like the Connor one, it had nothing to do with the story. But, hey, happens sometimes, I guess, but the Connor one I take issue with because it's clearly homaging the death of Superman. This isn't an important moment in comic book history. They're not homaging an important moment in comic book history. The death of Superman is an important moment. This is just Spider-Man and Spider-Boy slinging around town somewhere. That's it. So that that's my real issue with with DC's cover versus Marvel's cover this week. Um Yeah. I still think there's a lot of cool things they could do with the character. Wish I could say something about the art. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't a throwaway either. Um, like I said, don't take that into consideration. I can't draw. Disability prevents it. <laughs> but I'm really here for the story. So. Um, I'm happy to see they didn't disprove my dis my conspiracy theory, which is that this is the same Spider Boy as the Amalgam Spider Boy, but he doesn't remember. Yeah. 
seen a lot of reviewers saying, oh, absolutely, this disproves it. He said he was cut from reality. He didn't say what reality or or he could possibly be remembering it wrong. You know, and that, that I think is the case. But that's just my conspiracy theory I, I want to close on. Where, yes, he's remembering. Or maybe it's a new amalgam universe. Who knows? But, yeah. Thumbs were the books this week, kids. Manos, thank you for letting me review your book. Keep reading comics. Bob out.